The Kutu Sikha is Chelek Tezayin Mishpatim Aleph. In this Sikha, we're going to explore the idea of what brings us to fulfill the mitzvahs. Is it a Muna or is it Hasoge? Is it something that we do because we understand? Or is there something deeper than understanding? And obviously this is a very popular topic in Chassidus especially. Today, we're going to learn a new twist in this idea of serving Hashem with emuna, with beyond our understanding, beyond our comprehension. Shengiret meren emol, as the nomen from Asad Rebosh is atere deke nomen. Al kuponu mitzad minig Yisrael tere hi dirikt uish der teichin from the sedre. It's been spoken many times that the name of the sedre, which is a part of Torah because minig Yisrael, a, a, something that was taken on as a custom, as a tradition by Eden, becomes part of Torah. So the name expresses the theme of the entire sedre. We bowed out as the nomen from the ganze sedre. Is verstandig as in the nomen is merumis der teichen pnimi from alle in yonim was stayed in the sedre bis zum letzten pasuk. And since it is the theme, the name of the entire sedre. It's understood that the name alludes and re represents the theme, the inner theme of all the aspects of the sedra to the very last possible. This, based on this explanation is required with regards to the name of our sedra mishpatim. M is takas de gresta tel von der sedra. Red vegen mishpate vidiniatera. True that the large part of the parsha. The lion's share of the sedra is talking about the laws of Teda. At the end of Parshas Mishpatim, it goes back to talk about Matan Teda, the giving of the Teda and the preparations that were made thereto. Moshe went up to Har Sinai, which seemingly is not connected to Mishpatim. Mishpatim are the laws of Teda. And the story of Matan Teira is, is not related to the Mishpatim aspect of Teira. Nochmer, mit namen Mishpatim werden angerufen, die Mitzvah des Echiyu bis verstandig im Zeichel von Menschen. Kiyodua, as we know, that there are Eidos, Chukim and Mishpatim. Chukim are those Mitzvahs that we were not told the reason for them. Eidos are those Mitzvahs that we were told the reason that they represent something like Shabbos represents the fact that the Abish that created the world in six days, or Matzah, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, etc. And Mishpatim are those mitzvahs that are sensible, logical, things that we would have technically have known without the Torah being given to us. And many societies actually incorporate many of those laws in, into their rules, such as do not kill, do not steal, etc. Is not move on. So this is the Achan of Tumat and Teira. Was there in the Tzilton of Siyam from the Sad? Is given dust was eaten. I'm gezak nasa or nasa and Nishma. In other words, part of the preparations to Tumat and Teira that are discussed in the end of Parshas Mishpatim is the fact that Eden said nasa we will do, or more so nasa and Nishma. As Eden will unfolgen nasa, the Eibush and the Eden will listen and follow the instructions of the Eibush there. And even before they get to understand the reason why, Nasa first, first will do, and then Nishma, that will understand. Which is contrary to the concept of Mishpatim, which is logical, rational mitzvahs. So our first part of the question was that Mishpatim does not seem to include Matan Torah because it's two different ideas. Now here they seem to be incongruous. Nasev and Ishma means to do something without understanding the rationale. And Mishpatim refers to rational mitzvahs. So they seem to be opposites of one another. And this is not just about the story of Matan Teira that is related at the end of the Sedra, but also some of the dinim, some of the laws discussed in the Sedra are also 
questionable how they fit in under the umbrella name of Mishpatim. Amongst the din of the is the din, do not cook a kid in its mother's milk. Thus, Basar Bechalav is Nitke Mitzvah Sichlis Narachayik. Do not cook a kid in its mother's milk, we are taught, is the prohibition of cooking, or for that matter, eating or having enough from a, a, a mixture of milk and meat, which is not a rational mitzvah. It's a chayk, it's a statute, it's one of those mitzvahs that the Abishter did not tell us the reason. So, Sai the mitzvah of Bazar B'chalaf, and Sai the whole story of Matan Taira seem to not be connected to the name Mishpatim, and therefore the question is, why is the whole parsha named Mishpatim, including these uh, uh, details that seem to not fit in under the name Mishpatim? So in those days, we're going to try to suggest a reason. We're going to say that we want to bring out the mishpatim come from Sinai. But even though they are mishpatim, they are rational mitzvahs, nevertheless, they originate from the Abishter just like any other mitzvah. That's, that's the uh, suggested reason from those days. And the words of the Eila mishpatim, Rashi points out from the Medrash, from the drasha of Chazal in Mechilta, that the fact that it says ve'ela hamishpatim, usually you don't do a vav, especially in English, you don't do an and at the beginning of a sentence. If you say ve'ela hamishpatim, the vav connects it to the past. So the vav of the beginning of mishpatim is connecting us to Yisrael. Yisrael was this was the Aseris Adibris. So the Medrash says, Ma'ari Shoyni Misina, just like Aseris Adibris came from Sinai. Also, these mitzvahs, the mishpatim, even though they're rational mitzvahs, nevertheless, they originate from Sinai. And we know the inner, the deeper explanation in this teaching of Chazal. It's not just about where they originate from, but it's about how and why we fulfill them. But just like the Aseris Adibris are being fulfilled because the Avister commanded us to do so. Because we heard it by the, from the Avister at Sinai. So to the Mishpatim, even though they, they make sense, we're not doing them because of their logic, of their rationale. We're doing them because the Avister told us to do them because they come from Sinai. That's the deeper meaning of Af Elomi Sinai. Not only that they come from Sinai, but we fulfill them because of the fact that they are commanded by the Abishta. The feasible when the Khaira Gikit Masbir science we could have explained. Our boss and Unzi said in Mishpatim Rekibrah the Sipur has eaten the Gizak Nasav and Ishma. Why in our Sadra, which is named Mishpatim, it tells us the story of the fact that the Yidin said Nasav and Ishma that they accepted to do the mitzvahs without understanding or before understanding. Including the Isra of Basar B'chalav, which is not part of the Mishpatim. So we could say like this, the Torah is indicating to us, as Eich Mishpatim, Zainim B'pnim Yusam V'Basar B'chalav, Hecher from Tzeichol Chukim. But also Mishpatim, on a deeper level, go beyond rationale, and are, in a sense, Chukim, statutes, mitzvahs, that are beyond reason. Therefore, they too need to be fulfilled with Kabbalah's oil, with acceptance of the yoke of heaven, meaning to say, doing them for the sake of doing them. Because it's a decree of Hashem. So, since we touch off Elumi Sinai, that it means that we have to fulfill them because they come from Sinai and not just because they make sense. So, maybe what the Torah is doing is putting some of these. Uh, Nasa and Nishma aspects within Mishpatim to remind me that Mishpatim have to be done Nasa and Nishma because Hashem said so and not just because they make sense. So that's a suggested explanation. But of course, not a sufficient one. Over in Emes and Kemen as in Izagin, you can't say this. For two reasons. Aleph in Mechilti is the Atzvei Michilta brings a second opinion as to regards as to where the Mishpatim came from or where, or where the Yidin were when they were told the Mishpatim. 
Und nur die Idee werden gebracht mit Medrash Rabbe in unserer Parsha. In our, the Medrash Rabbe am Mishpatim only brings this opinion. And later in the, in the explanation of the Sikha, we're going to explain the deeper understanding of the Machlekes between Rashi and the Medrash as to the ori origin of, of the Mishpatim. Rashi, as we said, in Ois Beis, brings the Drashas Razal, the Mishpatim come from Sinai. The Medrash Rabbah brings from the Mechilta as the Eila Mishpatim B'mara Nemru. That Mishpatim was tell, told in Mara. Mara is the place where the Eden were before they came to Har Sinai, where the water was bitter, and, they, 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 and therefore the place was named Mara. But this is before Matan Teda. Was late der day of Kumto. He says, Das is as da is nitad the adgasha as Mishpatim Zain and Miss Sinai. So according to that opinion, we would not be emphasizing that Mishpatim come from Sinai because they don't. They came from Mara. Which brings us back to square one. Why is Mishpat, why does the Parsha named Mishpatim include things like Nasir and Ishma? But more importantly, even according to the opinion which is Psutish Mikra, that Mishpatim come from Sinai. We bow their nomen from their side, there is Doch Mishpatim, Muzman Zogin, as the Had Gosha Darvzain of them, for Zezain and Mitzvah Sichli is Mishpatim, who need the roof of Zezain and Sivoy Mishinai Chukim. If you wanted to emphasize that the Mishpatim are also Chukim, then name the Parsha Chukim. From the fact that the Parsha is named Mishpatim, seems to imply that the emphasis, the emphasis here is on the fact that they are rational mitzvahs. Not on the fact that they are mitzvahs that are beyond seichel. Thus haste, as from them was the ganze sedre, right, ungeru from mishpatim, that from the fact that the whole sedre is called mishpatim, that from a daik zayn, that we have to bring out, we have to point out, need with the asbara anal, as mishpatim zayn pipnim yusum chukim. Not like this explanation that we just tried to give, that mishpatim on a deeper level are actually beyond rationale. No punkt farkert, but just the opposite. Eichter iser from baser b'cholov, unachmer, eichter klolis dikin inyan from nasa, nasa v'nishma, is the epnimish dikatechim mishpatim. From the fact that the name of the parsha is mishpatim, this would imply just the opposite, that even baser b'cholov and even nasa v'nishma, which seem to be beyond logic, in truth, on their deeper level, are mishpatim. Because the name of the parsha is mishpatim. Mishpatim is a name. A name defines the essence, or a name defines the content. So if the content includes things that are not mishpatim, from the fact that the name is mishpatim, this would imply that on a deeper level, even those things are actually mishpatim. So of course we have to understand what is the connection between Nasev and Ishma, between Basar Bechalov and Mishpatim? Talad Eich Davin Fashtein does was the said the Mishpatim come back in the Parshas Yisrael. The next Ois is going to discuss the juxtaposition of Yisrael and Mishpatim. The fact that Mishpatim and all of these laws come right after Parshas Yisrael. Matan Teira. We have to understand why, because the Lechera seemingly. Seemingly, the more uh, a, a novel idea, the Chiddush, which means something that we wouldn't have known beforehand, what did Matan Teira introduce to us? Seemingly, it would be more the mitzvahs that are mishpatim, that are chukim, and not mishpatim. For two reasons. Well, Aleph, mishpatim will make daft up with mitzat chiyuv sichli. Eich on dem tzivu yashem. Mishpatim one would have to fulfill even without Hashem's commandment because they make sense. Is like the Gemara in Yuma uh, uh, it says that even if these even if these mitzvahs were not uh, told to us, were not written in the Torah, they should have been written anyway because they make sense. Beis frat leitn shidas aramban. Especially according to the Ramban, as the dinin evelcha b'nei noyach zayin on gizak givarin. When you talk about seven mitzvahs b'nei noyach, there are seven mitzvahs that were given to the entire world. One of the mitzvahs is called dinim. So usually we explain that what does dinim mean? Dinim means court, a court system, as to establish a, a, a system of laws, checks and balances, to make sure that people follow the society that they're in. 
The Ramban holds that when it says dinim, that the Neyak were commanded on, on dinim, main need blows lois of the yonim. It doesn't just mean a court system. The Eich dinik neva veina, the Eishik, uschar sochir, the dinia shemrim, the inesumifate, the avis nezikin, the chayvul bachaveroi, the dinim alve veloive, the dinim ekachmem kerek yitzvah. So the Ramban says that this would include many other aspects within dinim, such as stealing, cheating, paying your workers, shemrim, uh, 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 when you entrust someone to watch something for you, um, seduction or non-consensual relations, uh, uh, damages, uh, uh, borrowing and lending, business, uh, uh, commerce, all of these things that are uh, a huge part of Teda. In Rambam, it's it's Nezik, in Kinyi, Mishpatim, Shaftim. It's, 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 there's a whole slew of halachas and Teda, says the Rambam, this is all included in Dinim, that basically all of Bnei Noyach, they were, all, were all commanded to follow this way before the Teda was given. Kum tochois, as if klolos v'dei v'nyoni ha'am mishpatim, said in Allah Eden shein istan, Eden shein istan, but for the earth b'nei So many aspects of mishpatim, Eden were already commanded on them, commanded for them, to them, to do them, even before Matan Teda, as b'nei noyach. Because they're far, he adds here in the brackets, because they're far is Matan Teda given to Yere Devai El Arsinai, um Vaye Daber El Ekim Eskaladvarim Ha'ele Leimer, in an eifim from the chala am roim es akolis roim es anishma. Thus heista is galus elikis. This is the gamri yachem and seichel adam. Therefore, from the Torah it says that the avister came down on our Sinai, which we'll talk about soon. That the avister spoke these words, and the yidden saw there was a revelation that was beyond the seichel adam because that was the chiddush matan Torah. The chiddush matan Torah wasn't the, the logical, rational mitzvahs. It was those mitzvahs and those those commandments that supersede rationale, that you have to have a whole gilu yalaki, a whole revelation of Hashem to, uh, trans- to, to give them over to us. If that's the case, in the first thing that, seemingly, the first thing that we should be taught after Matan Teda are the Chukim. And the Eidos, those mitzvahs that are a unique uh, uh, contribution of Matan Teda. And there you see these mitzvahs express what Matan Teda introduced. So why does the Teda introduce Mishpatim right after Matan Teda? Things that are seemingly secondary to the big Chiddush of Matan Teda. It's true that according to the opinion that the Mishpatim come from Sinai, they have to be here so we should know that they come from Sinai. Even in that period, it says also these are from Sinai, also the Mishpatim. Chukim and the Yedos are erst from Sinai. That's what Sinai really came for. Mishpatim also from Sinai. But if, if you have to choose what should come first, what should come first are those things that are erst from Sinai. Those things that are primarily from Sinai. Mishpatim are also from Sinai, okay. But let them come after the Chukim. So this is our question, the question of Eizdal, a little bit of a long-winded question. But the question is, why is it that immediately after Parshas Yisra, immediately after Matan Teda, the Teda begins with Mishpatim, which seemingly are not the main thrust of why the Teda was given. And the question is intensified. The Fiyan now. As in Parshas, Mishpatim, Gufa, Bam, Sima, Sadra. At the end of Parshas Mishpatim, like we said earlier, it discusses the time period during and before, before and after Matan Torah. And according to Rashi, that these Mishpatim are Misinai, then they came after Matan Torah. After the discussion and the story that is being told over in the end of Mishpatim. 
in the Mem Yoim, was Ed is given for Har Sinai. When would have been told to Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe had to go back up to Har Sinai in the day after, after the day after Shavuos. And then there were 40 days in which the Abishar taught these halachas, these mishpatim to Moshe. And then Moshe Rabbeinu came down to teach them to the Yidden. Kum tois, as the dinim from ve'ela mishpatim to gleich noch sipur matan teda, shtein in te, der teda nit leten seder azmanim. So then, the chronology here is, is off. Because you have matan teda, then you have the mishpatim, then the teda goes back to mishpatim, to, to, to matan teda. If the mishpatim came in Sinai, then they should have that they should have been at the end after we finished telling the story of, of Matan Teira, which is at the end of the parsha. For sure, if the mispatim came in Mora, then it's for sure out of order because the you have yesterday, which is Matan Teira, then you have the mispatim, which were from before Matan Teira, and then you go back to Matan Teira, the end of the parsha. So the question here is. Not only does Mishpatim not fit in after, after Yisrael because of its theme, because Mishpatim are not the main Chiddush of Matan Teira, but the, even in chronology, even chronologically, in the chronology of it, the, 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 it, do, it doesn't follow. You know, if at least you would say, Mela Mishpatim, Hashem told, Moshe told Mishpatim before he told Chukim, so that's why he comes first. Okay, so, so he's telling us in the order that it happened, but here the order is off. For them, Alam is movement. Here's the summary before we get to, to the, the final question before the explanation. So here's the, the, the summation of, of, of where we're holding. For them, Alam is move on. From here, we, on, we can deduce three points. Alam. Hagam as a gilis matanteda gufa is nita nini from his bottom. Who canal as a matanteda is given as galus on the kishal of Alam and Asaychu. Even though the gili of matanteda, the revelation of matanteda was not. Primarily, the idea of mishpatim, as we've said before, that the revelation of Matan Teira was something that was beyond seichel. For Desvegin, nevertheless, the whole concept and idea of Matan Teira is expressed especially in mishpatim, and that's why it has to come right away. Conversely, but there is another layer of Matan Teira that you reach after Mishpatim. Gimel of Erdos Gufa is a prat in the minion from Parshas Mishpatim. And that second level that we reach of Matan Teira that we reach after Mishpatim is still part of Mishpatim. It's not in its own Parsha, it's not in the next Parsha. It's still part of Mishpatim. So in other words, we have Matan Teira, then Mishpatim, and then Mishpatim includes another layer of Matan Teira. And of course, we're going to have to explain what this all means. And Ois Hay is going to, before we get to the explanation, and you see the same thing from last, last week, Parashas yesterday, in the structure of these Sikhs that are a little bit different then the, the, the sikhs of the halakim that we learned last year is that the, uh, the questions are, are half the sikha. Half the sikha is, are the questions because in the questions themselves lies a, a, the foundations that are ultimately going to give us the answers and the new beautiful, fascinating teachings that we learn in these sikhs. So in Oisei, we're going to introduce a, a very fascinating teaching from the Shalah Akadosh. Actually, on Parshas B'Shalach, that's going to help us understand that there's two layers within the fulfillment of mitzvahs and within our relationship with Hashem. Then we understand this by introducing the explanation of the Shalah and the Pasik, which is in Oz Yashir, this is my God and I will beautify him I will make him beautiful, and the Ke'ovi, the God of my father, is Vareb Menu, and I will exalt him, I will lift him up. Which this teaching of the Shalah is brought by the Friedrich Rebbe in the Sikhs. This is a quote from the Shalah, and he says like this When it's my God, 
Shehu keili it fits my God mitzad hasagosi v'iliyasi because of my knowledge and my comprehension. I learned about it and I understand it and I internalized it. Oz v'anveyu. Then he, he touches the anveyu as two words, Miloshan anivahu. It's him and me. V'tseni leymar anivahu dvukim biyachat ki v'yachal. He and I, the Avishter and me, the Yid, are bound together or cleaving together. We're one. Ki ayidiya nitfesas belev. Because the knowledge is grasped in my heart, it becomes part of me, and therefore, when I know Hashem, we become one. But when my knowledge is not because I understand it, it's something that was passed down to me, tradition. Then he's the God of my fathers. He's my God because he was my father's God. And the fathers, my ancestors, passed it down to me. Then I will lift him up. He is above and aloof from me. And I am distant from it. It is something that is concealed in my heart. In other words, it's there. The connection is there, but I don't feel it. And therefore it feels removed and aloof. So that's the Taj of the Shalom. Of the of the li. If it's my Avishter, I learned about it, I understand it, I feel it, I become one with it, then I'm one with Hashem. If it's only mine because it comes from my fathers, then he's talking my Avishter, but it's, it's a little bit removed from me. It's Ufkeb. Thus haste. As in So now let's, let's make, let's interpret this on a practical level. And he says like this, in addition to the emunah, the, the, the faith level relationship, that comes something that was passed down from father to son, or person to person, there also has to be knowledge. Faith in Hashem, something that I can't understand, it only allows my feeling to be of the uh, uh, my feeling of the Avisha to be in a way of Ramvanizga that is removed from me. Umbele is there eleven, therefore he feels distant from it because it's on something that is only deep in his heart. However, but if you could reach a level where you understand and comprehend and you reach it, you connect to it. Zakeli, it's my Abishter, something that I connect with. Then you could have a more personal relationship with the Abishter. This is what the Pasik is says elsewhere. Know the God of your fathers. It's not enough that the Abishter is the Abishter of your father, of your fathers. It has to be something that is yours, something that you understand. So that's the teaching of the Shalom. Emunah is one level, but what's much more important and much more impactful on the person is the Yediyah Mitzada Asaga, when you can understand the age. Isn't that But we have one question on this. Late in Pirish from Shalom. According to the Pirish of Shalom, that the Pasuk of here is telling me it's not enough to have a Muna, you have to also have Hasage, understanding. But the Pasuk is not staying in the Fakert and Seder. And the Pasuk should have been in the opposite order. First, talk about the Kayavi, which is the Muna. And then Zakeli, which is Asaga. Because the starting point is the basic emunah which is being passed down to us from our fathers, our parents before us. And then comes the higher level where we understand the Avishter, we learn and we understand. So we should also be able to understand something in Elokos. In, in, in as the Shalom himself says, in addition to that which the emunah is established in your heart, because it came from your ancestors, 
You also have to know something because you understand it. So obviously the hasaga part is the second level. So the Pasuk should have seemingly started out with the Yamuna, which is Alaki Alivarim Manu, and then said Zekeli Vanveyu, which is the second and higher level, the level of understanding. Lichaira. Voltman at the Kent Mazbiz and Apia Yadua. So maybe we can explain it according to what we know. As a filo nochtam he metrokter up the Yamuna and Yidi Mitzad the Hasaga. That even after we you, you carry down the Amuna, trucked to carry, you carry down the Amuna in a level of understanding. Muz un es is the alma od for Amuna is zacher for nasagim. There's another layer of Amuna. There's always going to be Amuna that's beyond your understanding. But when we bow the Rebbe's there is infinite. Since the Rebbe's there is infinite, is vi heich meken the geich mitasaga as high as 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 deep as far as you'll reach. With your level of comprehension, that an alamo faran madregis in a lekus, that an echaf on a sogim, there is always going to be higher levels that are beyond your comprehension. Which can also be grasped, which can also be taken, received, and uh, 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 accepted with a munah, only with a munah. And thus is the kavanah. So let's just suggest, and that's why it says in him say that that's the intent. In the order of the pasuk from pasuk zakeli van veyu and the kei avi varimenu to have the amuna after the after the hasaga the rechidus as eich nach the ravei the pasuk zakeli van veyu hasaga to introduce the idea that even after you 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 do the avi of understanding muzay and the nini from the kei avi varimenu amuna you have to also be amuna afterwards. So maybe that's why the, the that's why the pasuk is written in that order. As is about nachal shnit glatik, but this is not smooth. Glat, glatik means smooth. Em is takas the dadi madrege for namuna was kump nach the yudim itzada asoge. This answer that you want to give is not a sufficient answer because it's true that there's a muna that comes after understanding. For vos ober ver di ver di vos ober ver di der man di amuna was kump friyer. One of the yisait from the asoge, but everyone is going to agree that amuna comes first. There might be a second amuna after the hasaga, a second level of faith after the level of understanding. But before understanding, there's for sure the basic faith that you're raised with, that you're born, that, that you're that, that you're born with, and that you before you get to understanding, you already have the amuna in elokayavi, which is something that came from the Abish, the the verse is in im. The amuna in elokayavi was in im is the nochter da zekeli. There is the first, there's the Lekayavi, and only afterwards comes, uh, the, again, the, the first Amunna is the Lekayavi, that was comes from your parents, and only afterwards comes the Zekeli. So it's true that there is another Amunna, but why are we ignoring the first Amunna? So the question that we had is, why is Zekeli coming before Lekayavi? Why is Hasaga coming before Amunna? So we wanted to suggest that... There's another amuna after, after the hasaga. There's another amuna after the understanding, but it still doesn't answer the question why the amuna that comes first, the elakei avi, that which is coming from the ancestors before us and being given to us as the at the entry level, why is that not mentioned in the pasuk? Seemingly a totally new idea that is unrelated to mishpatim. We're going to see how dafke this. Is going to answer our mispatim question. So, in other words, in, sh in, in, in short, we ask the question: What is the connection of mispatim to the parts of the parsha, such as Nasa and Nishma and Basar B'cholav? Why does mispatim come right after Yisrael? Seemingly, we should have focused on the chukim. That seems to be the bigger chiddush in Matan Torah. And now we have to understand what is. The Pasik teaching us here about Emunah, uh, connecting to Hashem on a level of Emunah, and then connecting to Hashem on a level of Asaga of understanding, and then another Emunah that comes afterwards. What are all of these levels, and how do how does this idea of Emunah and Asaga of faith versus logic, how does that help us understand the Parshas Mishpatim and the various different messages? That we're taking from the past. The beer and here comes the beer. 
Betachtet from Matan Tede is the Bittel Agzede ben Egeel Yenim Betachtet. The ultimate purpose of Matan Tede, as we know, is the nullification, the deactivation of the decree with regards to the El Yenim the the dwellers of the upper worlds and the dwellers of the lower worlds. That the lower ones could rise to above, and the ones above could rise, can, can descend down below. And this will bring the connection between the, uh, the upper and the lower. We're not trying to, to, to break the existence of the lower one and turn him into an upper one, into a, an above one. Nor we are is in Zayn Mitzias as Tachtin, so that Eilus Zayn is Chaber Ver Medil Yainim. But we, what we want is that staying in the state of a one below, he should be connected to above. Not he should become a dweller of above. He should remain below and be a Tachtin. But as a Tachtin, connect to above. And it's go and to emphasize this Nakuda that we don't want to change him, it rather. But we want to connect it. Is going to the next couple of paragraphs is going to emphasize this nakuda. The nakuda that we don't want to change the tachtin. We want, we, 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 in other words, to uh, change his existence, change his definition, and turn him into an alien. But we want him as a tachtin to be connected to the alien as a as an, a, a dweller of the lower world to be connected to the above. And this explains why it's not enough that the the uh, uh, the ones above come down below. They came down after Asina. Not enough. Also that the ones below should uh, should ascend to above. The medrash starts with the ascent of the ones below. Before the descent of the ones above, even, even though in actuality, first the Avister came down on our Sinai, and then and later he told Mesha to go up, which was in Parshish Mishpatim. So even though first Hashem comes down and then Mesha goes up, nevertheless, the way the Medrash teaches it, the Medrash teaches that first the ones below go above, go up, and then the ones above come down because the measure is emphasizing that it's not enough that the ones above come down. The ones below have to go up. Why? The fact that the ones above are coming down below, are descending to our world, that's what they're doing. That's what the ones above are doing. As the Medris says clearly, that the Abister initiates this. The river Peltus and Tachtenim need them Chibur Metelokus that the Bitlam Etzias. Therefore, the, the the extent of its impact on the lower worlds is that it, that it could nullify them or take away their existence. For Nidin Bifrat, especially those of the Yidin. As it says in the Pasik, Vayachrat Kalaam, they tremble. They began to lose their existence. The people uh, shook, they trembled, and they stepped back, they stood from far. And from the whole world was affected by this. The whole mountain, the earth itself shook, trembled. The whole world was affected by it. Even the birds did not chirp. And the whole world was silent. So when you have only El Yoinim, Yedu L'Tachtoinim, that the ones above are coming down below, this is an overwhelming experience that takes away the, the existence of the ones below and they lose themselves. But Kedei is also Chuyisrim, the Kavan of Manatei Kanal, but in order to ultimately fulfill the ultimate purpose as welt als mit sies von atachten so sei mir huber um yuchel mit all jenem the world the world in the state of a of a one below should be connected and unified with the worlds above a der gibur ken ufkiton werden nur durch der avedes atachten asme this for this you need the 
impact, the, 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 the work, you need the avoid of the one below. As the tachtoinim, they should ascend to above. This is a very important detail. What we want over here is not to take away the mitzvahs of the tachtim, the existence of a lower of a dweller in the lower world. We want that as a tachtim, as someone who dwells in the lower world, he should connect to the elyonim. And for this, the tachtim has to do his own avodah. It's not enough to rely on the elyonim coming down to our world, but we in this world have to lift ourselves up. On the other hand, there had to be first the introduction, the initiation of the Elyonim coming down. And says that the Abister started. Because the Tachtainim, they need Kaya, they need. Uh, they need to be given the, the power to be able to rise above themselves. So there needs to be some level of bittle first. So first you have a yeinim yedu l'tachtoinim, which causes a bittle in the tachtoinim. And then the tachtoinim uses use that bittle as the strength that they need to lift themselves up. But only they, the tachtoinim, could lift themselves up by themselves, they cannot rely on the Ilyanim to lift themselves up. So, we have this very famous Gzeda, Bittul Gzeda, that's discussed in many Sikhs of the Rebbe. Here the Rebbe is focusing on the fact that the Bittul Gzeda is not meant to change or to deactivate the Metzias of the Tachten and turn them into an alien. But we want Dafka that the Tachten should remain a Metzius, and as a Tachten connect himself to the Elyon, and that can only be done through the Tachten's Aveda themselves. They cannot rely on Elyonim Yedul Tachtenim on the Giluyim on the revelations that come from the the, 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 the higher worlds. Now in Oishches, he's going to connect these two in Yonim of the Elyonim Yedel Tachtoinim, the Giluyim that come from above, and the Tachtoinim Yalu Elyonim, the Avodas Hamata, the work that the, that the lower uh, uh, worlds do, and he's going to connect those with those, those two ideas with the two ideas of Emuna and Hasada, serving Hashem out of understanding, which is basically coming from from within us from the Tachtin and serving Hashem through Emunah which is like a Gilu Milamayla These two in Yonim of El Yonim should come down to this world and the Tachtin should go up to the higher worlds these are the two of these are the, in each individual person are the two avedas of emuna and the understanding of seichel emuna completely the established negi from the mother of guf emuna does not come through the efforts of the person nor does given from the mila it's given from above or the blush from sigrin as shalak abal is me piyish as the shala writes it comes down from person to person under river and therefore i feel when the emuna like to mention when we said that emuna is a mekayim rotz nashem v'chulu even when the emuna illuminates is illuminated by the person it's shining. It's alive, and because of that amuna, he's fulfilling the will of Hashem. This does not connect him, does not unify him with the elokus. The mitzvahs are the black The person, the person remains removed, distant from the Abishtim. because the what, what's compelling him to do this action is something that's not part of him. It's something that was placed upon him. But when the person toils and works hard to understand the Lakus, but does come from Im Gufa, that comes from within the person himself, from Zain Mitzis, from his own existence, then what pale this as I Mitzis of Ermiukhmitanabishan, then this affects that his existence, his person, should become one with Hashem. And Nibu Udvukim Biyachat, he and I, the Abish and Hashem, become cleaved as one. On the other hand, is a muna that you say back down to the of Asaga. The amuna, you can't skip the amuna. You need the amuna as the foundation and the introduction 
to the Aveda with Seichel Knalas Al Yenim Yedu is the Adam Tataklin Yalo, like we said in the previous eyes, that first you need the Abishta to come down to this world as a to create a bitl, and that bitl is in a sinas kayak. Now Seichel with Sadat me is all to Machanatos, because if you're just relying on Seichel, and you're just relying on your rationale, then you may make mistakes. There's Sheikha from Abbas Atzmai, the bias of his own self-interests can gain him that the Seichel on the Mechavit and Elamis can cause that the Seichel should not reach the truth. Under Riber, Musa Zayn Gibuit Af and Yisait from Emunah Kabbalah Seil. It has to be built on the foundation of Emunah Kabbalah Seil. Was Farhit as a Zayn Seichel Miti, which will protect it, that the Seichel will stay consistent and truthful and on the right direction. But Emunah by itself is not enough because with Emunah you can't truly uh, connect as one because it's not something that's coming from within you. So we see a very beautiful parallel between Al Yenim Yedu Tachtenim and Tachtenim Yalu Al Yenim and Emunah and Asaga. That Hatachtenim Yedu Tachtenim Yalu Al Yenim is the main avoda here, but it has to be it has to come first. It has to come after al yainim yedu l'tachtainim, and so too you have to, the main aveda is aveda samata, which is expressed in seichel, but it has to come after the foundation of emuna uh, in the Eved. The meat is moving. They say that aparsius, and now we can go back and explain. They say that aparsius, aparsius, and then aparsius makpatim. Yisdeh the parsha of Matan Tei that does not see the gemin given in the Milamayla. Well, Yisdeh the Tachtenim Yisdeh represents that which is coming from above. When I say Atzich Dan Eich Uf Kitam by Yidden the Gilu Yamuna, and that's when the Yidden it was accomplished by Yidden the revelation of Amuna. But Dik Tzich Eisim Bittul by Yachra, which is expressed in the Bittul of the Yid as it was in practicality by Yachra they trembled. But once you have this revelation from above, now begins the main Aveda of uplifting the ones below to accomplish the oneness of the creations of Hashem as they are in their own Metzius and connect them with Hashem with Elokus. And also the from his bottom, Mitzvah Sichlius. And that's the idea of Mishpatim, the rational mitzvahs. As Chachmosi is Baruch Leik Tzichop and Seichal Nivra, that a human intellect should be able to comprehend the Abish's wisdom. Bizes Vetzvish is a Yichud Nifla to the point that this incredible oneness is accomplished. Was Durch Dem Nem Durch Chachmosi is Baruch the answer Mitzvah Yisadam. And the Abish's wisdom permeates the entire person. And Durch Dem, Fir Tzich Uis Der Mechuvan. And this is the ultimate purpose of fusing together the spiritual and the physical, heaven and earth, the ones above and the ones below. So Mishpatim is not just like we thought before, something that we didn't need the Torah for, and something that's understood al Seichol, and maybe even comes from Mara, which we'll still get to. Mishpatim is how we take Torah, how we take our Sinai and the Gilu Milumayla and we personalize it because we can understand it. And all of a sudden, our mind, our brain is comprehending the Abish's wisdom. And this has the most incredible impact on us that it makes us one with Hashem. Now let's go back and explain the Machloikis if you will, between Rashi, who brings the Medrash that Mishpatim come from Sinai, and the Mechilta that says, the Medrash Rabbah, I'm sorry, that says that the Mishpatim come from Mara. He's going to say, it's not a Machlaikis, it's just two levels in the Avoid. This will also give an explanation uh, on a deeper level and the difference between the Drash and the Sinai. Which since Rashi brings it in his Pirush on Torah, it's clear that this is the Pirush that is consistent with Pshat, with the simple understanding of the Pasik. Under the day in Medrash, which is obviously beyond Pshat, 
that Mishpatim come from Mara, but before Matan And he explains like this. The learning pshat symbolizes the person at the beginning of his journey. When he's at the beginning of his journey, he has not yet reached uh, the, the level of understanding the, or a lakus affecting his emotions. He should have love or awe of Hashem. Then seichel is not enough. The fact that his seichel tells him that he has to fulfill certain mitzvahs is not going to work. Because his animal soul is still in control. Therefore, his approach has to be these things come from Sinai. That even rational mitzvahs have the same strength, the same power as the Sesadibris. Which were given at our Sinai, with a whole sturim, with a whole commotion, the koyles, the brachim, the chulu, with with thunder and lightning, etc. Was the rasmat and teirat gepeled in byechad kolam, which this commotion, this tumult of matan teirat, is what affected the people that they should tremble. Mis givarim for etzitet, un on givarim the egri yeshus umetzias, they trembled, they got frightened. And it affected their very essence, their very existence, their ego. And to give an example of how this would be emulated in the person's Aveda, is that in from the Elam Yargis Adam Yitzhatebiyatsara, which is what it says in the Gemara that a person should always get his Yetzir Toyib angry at his Yetzhara. Was there Gisrei and Rugza for Nefesilikis, the screaming, the shouting? And the anger of the Nefesh Elikis on his Nefesh Abamis, Nemtim Durkhon, and Everton is battle. It, 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 it penetrates him and it loses himself. When you, when you scream at the Nefesh Abamis, he gets scared. So, in other words, sometimes you can't rely on your Seichel. You have to use this, this uh, I told you so, this, this command, this uh, uh, a strong control that you have to take over the situation. And that's why. At, on the level of Pshat, we say, We're not looking at the Seichel. We're looking at the, the, the fact that we're coming from, from the Gilu Milamayla. Pshas menhal shein ober badru shevetera dos heistim diachkele dargis in avoid the Bavir of his banos v'chulu when you love which drush medrish which is which in this teaching represents a person that's already somewhat accomplished in his learning Torah. That he can be misbeaten, he can contemplate, understanding things. He could reach Ava his, his emotions have been affected by this. Then, quite the contrary. We have to fulfill these mitzvahs without relying on the yargis. To the, to making, to, to the anger. To the kailis of brachim of Matan To the hoo-ha. To the commotion of Matan Teira. Not a darf. Even if you say that this Mishpatim came from before Matan Teira, they make sense. They, the, the Seichel tells you to do it. So once you've accomplished something in your level and you're not dependent on this Gili Melamayla to keep you on the straight and narrow, all of a sudden you can employ your Seichel and say, the reason I'm doing this is because it makes sense. Because at this point in your Aveda, your Seichel is not dangerous, or not as dangerous as it was when you started out. And therefore, Fart Yisrael comes first. When Agam has laid Echlet Medrish, as they say that a Parsi is three Parsi and not Parsi Spatim, even the Medrish that says that the mitzvahs came, Mishpatim came from Mara, still the say that a Parsi are Mishpatim after Yisrael. Because even if you're relying on your seichel, it still needs the foundation, the basis of emuna. Because without any emuna, the seichel, even when you're further down your journey, the seichel is dangerous. Is this nervous that you say it from the rasagi is Sinai? However, according to this opinion of the Medrash, the, it's just the foundation that is based on Kabbalah's oil in Sinai, on the fact that it came in Lamayla, but the actual implementation of the mitzvahs is because of Seichel. 
That's why Mishpatim has to come after Yisra. But, according to the Medrash, which is referring to the person on a higher level, Mishpatim is Memora Nemru. It's not coming from Sinai. It's coming from Mora. It's coming from Yosecha. So based on what we explained in the previous Ois, Oisi Ois, that first you have a Gilu Milamayla, and then you have the Avedu Mitzad Hamata. First you have the revelation from above, and then you have the Avedu that the person does by himself. This, this will explain these two opinions. The first opinion that says Misina is talking about when you're doing the mitzvahs because you're being forced to from above uh, 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 because of the commotion and the noise that cause a bittle in the person and he does it with Kabbalah's oil. And then afterwards comes the, the, the next avoider, the avoider that comes, mitzad haseich. Now before we go to explain what happens after Hasaga, in Eishud Aleph, he brings in what, you know, sort of a side point that strengthens and emphasizes this Nekuda, the Nekuda that Mishpatim have to come from the person himself. This will also explain what the Rambam teaches. The Gemara has a discussion. The Gemara says that when a person refrains from doing something that is Asr al Pitayra, a person shouldn't say, I don't want to do it. It's disgusting. A person should say, I want to do it. But the reason I'm not doing it is because the Ibis doesn't allow it. My Father in Heaven decreed it upon me. Which seemingly is a, is, is a, is a level, I'm not doing it because not like I change. I all of a sudden don't like it because it's awesome. No, I as in the person that I am, I still like it. But I, I'm bottled to the Abish there. To the Abish just mitzvah and I don't do it. Says the Rambam that this concept applies not in the Yom for Chukim. It only applies to Chukim, those mitzvahs that don't have, that, that, the reasons weren't given. Oh, but in Yom for Mishpatim, that for Zog EFC. But when it comes to Mishpatim, first say EFC. If a person is looking at food, not kosher of food, a person should say, I love it, it's delicious food, it looks delicious, but I can't eat it because the Avisha told me not to. But a person should say, I want to kill, I want to steal, a person shouldn't say that, because that means, that means he's, uh, he's not a mensch. That means that his middays are, are, are destructive, are violent. So the Rambam says that when it comes to mishpatim, things that are rational, Things that are logical, a person shouldn't say Efshi. I want to do it. So the question is, seemingly Chassidus tells us that, let me mention this at the beginning of the Sikha, that even when it comes to Mishpatim, they should be done not just because my Seichel tells me to do it, but also because it's the Abishter's will, just like a Chayk. So the Chayda, why shouldn't, it, when it comes to Mishpatim, I should say, and the reason I'm refraining from this mish, from this uh, irrational mitzvah, or mitzvah that I'm not allowed to do, is because Hashem told me so. Now the beard is canal, but now we can understand. It has to be a foundation of accepting upon ourselves the, the, the will of Hashem. We can't rely solely on the person's logic or feelings. And more so, that in them found that he could have this Hashem. If we're going to rely solely on Seichel, then it'll miss the whole thing that, that, that we're connecting to Hashem. That everything that we're doing is, is based on the foundation of an Eich Yashem Lekecha. That the Abishter is our Abishter. So you're right that the Yisoyed, the foundation has to be Kabbalah's Eil. But the ultimate goal is that the Mishpatim should penetrate and permeate his internal kaiches, his personality, his feelings, his thoughts. But therefore the person has to be not just because he has to, because obviously Shemaim Gazer like as the Amistar demanded it. But a person has to change himself, has to transform himself, that even in his own state, 
He should be a moiz berai. He should be someone that is that that evil is abhorrent to him. Un shai and it should call out an inner scream of I don't want to do this. It's not. It's bad. And I am a better person. I'm a changed person, and I don't want to do this. So now that we understand, based on what we explained, that even though everything has to be based on Kabbalah's oil, but there is an advantage and an ultimate purpose in serving Hashem with, with Seichel. Now we understand that when it comes to a mitzvah, the mitzvah will be Seichel, a person say Eevshi. I'm a changed person. I don't want to do these things. Not just because Hashem told me I'm not allowed to do it, but because I am transformed. Because my seichel tells me that I should be that I should be this kind of person. So, it just so this ice emphasizes and strengthens this nakuda of the uh, of the uftu, the greatness, the advantage, the accomplishment of seichel. Because when we serve Hashem with seichel, albeit on the foundation of emunah and kabbalah's oil, we serve Hashem with seichel, it changes us. It makes us into a different person. It changes our midas. It changes our seichel. It makes us into a better person. And because of that, we can connect to Hashem on our level, which is a huge accomplishment. In Ois Gimel, in Ois Yud Beis, it's going to take us that after all that, there is another level. After we reached seichel, and we're serving Hashem on a level of seichel, that is, that that keili v'anveyu, that it's aniva hu, that it's me and Hashem together. is still a higher level. Yud beis agama sida ma'ilin d'rabbi devoni diem et adasad. Although we just explain at length that there is an advantage of serving Hashem by knowing with comprehension. Because through that there can be a oneness with the Avitur's wisdom. Since, however, the person's seichel is limited, is finite. Is moving as the Yehuda the Shaykh and the Madrek is because I never have to live as well in Zainzeichel. So it's understood that this bond with Hashem is limited to the the reach of the Seichel. The Kavan of Mount David, the Chibu of Nalin Tachin is the Chaber, as Echadi or Yenivel, because I'm Hakafan Asagas Adam. But the whole idea of the connecting the above and below is that even those levels above that are beyond. The person's comprehension, even those that are totally removed from rationale, from, from the person's intellect. So they too should somehow bond with the lower levels. And again, we don't want to the, the lower levels to lose themselves. Not as a deal but they should remain as a tachtain and yet connect. And be permeated with the elyonim, with the ones above. So the so so it was, Avayda is not done yet because the Tachtin already transformed themselves to the point of the of that is connecting via seichel to chachmasi is but up to the says chachma. What about all the levels of elyonim that are beyond the seichel? This is the Chiddush that after Zakir Ivan Beyo comes to the Keovi Varim Menu. The Amun of Osmod Mikabali Spipi, so says Ak Dhamma to the Zakir Ivan Beyo. The Amun that's coming from our fathers, from our ancestors, which, as we said at length, is the foundation and the preparation to serving Hashem with Seichol, is Nitan Avedim Sad Madam Gufa, is not coming from the person. Coming from above, therefore, it's not something that impacts the, the existence of the person, the state of the individual. And therefore, it doesn't fit in to the shida of the yidin. This is not their uftu from zayir avay the shida that akech was kumbal amayla. It's because it's not something that they accomplished. It's something that came from above, so they have nothing to sing about. You don't sing about uh, other people's accomplishments, you're singing about your accomplishments. So therefore, the Amunah that comes from above doesn't get included. That was our question. Why don't we mention the first Amunah, the basis? He says, without mentioning it, because it's not coming from the Yitzhavayit, it's coming from the Milo. 
Ashen ke nachtem was by modem is dodder yichud betachel from chakom asli is baruch. Ani vuhud vukim biyachad beid it's a zamin. But once you come to the avedah which is through seichel, where you're becoming one with the emisters chachma, he and I are bound, are cleaving together as one. Bees in ein vorsum and suda they are included in one word the anveyu. One word that includes aniva who the mother of Kitanas Echti Madregis of Kazanaka from Zaina Saga. Then it could accomplish that even those levels that are beyond this comprehension, these as Mackenzie Nem and Norin and Ephraim from Vadim and Uve Munna, they're so high, they're so lofty that they can only be received in a level of aloofness of faith. Zainan Zay Neet and the Vatals, I'm at Sias, nevertheless, they don't take him, they don't break his. His existence, nor did about him and who goof on them through time. It sees this idea that he is aloof, that he is removed. It still uh, encompasses his existence. But on the bow, the time it sees is given on for ain't sick with a lacus because since his existence has become one with a lacus, that's in it in his battle. A filu from the madregis, so as I say, it doesn't lose the mitzvahs even when the revelation is higher than the vessel. Even if he can't comprehend what is what the, the higher levels, it still doesn't break it. Thus is the Azbara of them was to see him from Parsons Mishpatim is like about the of the Mishnah. This explains why at the end of Mishpatim comes Nasiv and Mishnah. And even before that, there's the din of Asvachalov, which is a chukah, a supra rational mitzvah. Because once you have mishpatim, once you have the oneness with the abister that's based on seichel, that in eich di chukim, biz eich that inyan for nasav and nishma matan un matan teira, then the supra rational. Even the very idea of Matan Teda, where we accept the Abishta on a level of Nasa before Nishma, before we understand, they become, in their Bechina from Mishpatim, they become like a Mishpatim in the same category as Mishpatim. Say, Nem and Durch Adam. They permeate the person, they affect the person on a level that he is not overwhelmed by it, but he is affected by it. He doesn't lose himself, but it uplifts him. So now we have answered all of our questions. If we go back to the beginning of the Sikha, we asked the question, we said in the end, in the end of Oiz Gimel, we said that from the fact that the name is Mishpatim, it means that even the Chukim are really in the level of Mishpatim. We just explained that, that once a person reaches the Aved and Mitzvah Seichel, that even when he goes higher than Seichel, it still doesn't break him, it's not Mevatalim, but it actually permeates him, it becomes part of him because he himself has already changed himself from the fact that he unified his seichel with the Abish Chachma. Then, with the end of Eish Dalad, we concluded that the Inyan of Matan is expressed specifically in Mishpatim. Although after Mishpatim, there's going to be another Matan Torah, level of Matan Torah, but a Prat in Mishpatim. Now it flows beautifully. First you have Matan Torah, then you have Mishpatim, which is drawing down Matan Torah into Seichel Adam to connect the person as a Tachtim to become part of Matan Torah. And once you do that, then you could reach to the higher level of Matan Torah. Those things that are beyond Seichel, but now they're still included in Mishpatim, that even though they're beyond Seichel, they're not Mivatel. They don't overwhelm and break the person, but they uplift and permeate the person because the person has become one, the Anveyu. This explains the Shalah. First you have Zekeli v'anveyu da'aveyu mitzada Seichel, which makes you one with Elokos. And then you have Elokos, you reach an even higher level of Elokos that is beyond Seichel. Now let's bring this all down a little bit to us. Shame he doesn't get some mountain table cloud. It's free here, compars just to give me the middle of us as hacker from the seals. The no hate to kind of the other parts of his body. Just like we said this in general with regards to the whole giving of the tater. The first you have to have yesterday, which is the revelation from above that is beyond the person's mitzvah, is beyond the person's existence. 
And then you could have Mishpatim, which is the Aveda Sa'adam. When in them goof, I need Mishpatim itself. You have two levels. You have two levels. Free and Mishpatim keeps shooting Mitzvah Sichlius. First, you have the rational mitzvahs of a Yusuf, which is based on the foundation of Yisrael, which is the Amunah, the first level of Amunah. And then you have the second level after the Mishpatim, you have Chukim, Un Matin Teira, then you have the supra rational and Matin Teira, Nid, that's an Inivism of Atal Zay Mitzis, Rabbis Nemendur, Zay Mitzis, Mishpatim, then comes the Mitzis of, then, then comes the Chukim within Mishpat, Parshish Mishpatim, the higher level of Teira, but in a way that it permeates the person and not breaks the person. Yes, let's take this whole lofty idea and bring it down practically to us. The same evolution, if you will, the same Seder is with regards to the revelation of the previous Seder of Chassidus. Free is given the Gilim and Teres Chassidus Akhlalis. First came the revelation of Chassidus Akhlalis, the the Chassidus of the Baal Shem Tev. In an eighth of us is Nitin Melubish and Seichel. This was beyond Seichel. This was before we were able to understand the the the, the teachings of Chassidus Al Pi Seichel. Vidas is Nizgalik Van Durchen Baal Shem Tev. So the, the, first you have the revelation of Chassidus Akhlalis as it came from the Baal Shem Tev, which the Ikerad Gashi is given after Minyuf and Amun. Where the main emphasis of the Baal Shem Tev was the emunah of the person. Spoke to the simple people, you, you, you woke within them a spark of connection with Hashem. Where you know that the Ethan of the Baal Shem Tev was a bit sadik with his emunah would give life to everyone. And even if even if the person himself was a tzaddik, he was the emunah, so he was all about the emunah. So all about the deep internal connection with the Ebesh. But the ultimate purpose is that Chassidus should permeate the person, should penetrate his existence, should change him. Zayn Seichel, and Durchim the Keiches Pnimis Ela Adam, that his Seichel and his internal faculties, his heart and his emotions should be affected by Chassidus. No, it's not like we're going to in your front here. Chassidus Chabad Durchnal. Then came the Alter Rebbe, who revealed Chassidus Chabad, Chachma Bino Das, was Ered Arab Kitrag Chassidus and Chabad Shevenefach, which the Alter Rebbe brought down Chassidus into the person's intellectual faculties. As yet there is always can and first thing that anybody should be able to comprehend Chassidus, these to Duchnem is a ganze metzias to the point that it should permeate and impact his entire existence. And he brings out here in the brackets, and thus is the Asbari in the words from the Rav Nivarditch. And this is the explanation in the, in the saying of the Levi Yitzchak of Varditch, which we actually mentioned in the Sikha of Yitzchak in Chelek Yud. Mira ben Alek, he guessed from Ein Shishul, all of us, all of the students, the disciples of the Magid of Mesvich, we all ate from the same bowl. Under Litvak, the Alter Rebbe, had Sugenum and the Berchushke, Smetna. But the Alter Rebbe, who was known as the Lithuanian because he came from Lita, from Lithuania, he took the cream. He took the fattiest, the juiciest, the creme de la creme. What, what, what did he get that the others didn't get? Because Chsidis Chabad is what leads to the ultimate goal and purpose of Chsidis Akhlalis. That mishpatim, rational mitzvahs, rational service of Hashem, leads, is the ultimate purpose, brings you to the ultimate purpose of, of, of Matan Taita. And so too, Chassidus Chabad, understanding Chassidus, and allowing, you, your, allowing your person to be transformed by learning Chassidus, this changes, this is the ultimate goal of the Gil Yachsidus HaKlalis started out with Amunah, with touching the person on a basic level. But then ultimately it has to do, it has to change the person. And through them, but this is the Asagi in Elokus, this is the Mephav and the Nibud, who can be Yachad, and through having the comprehension in Elokus that a person becomes one with Hashem, and then when you come to the higher level, 
Like it says that the ultimate knowledge is to know that you'll never ultimately know. Is the more you learn about Alakus, the more you realize that you can never ultimately know. Even those things that he thinks he understands are really beyond his understanding. That a person, that even those things that are beyond the Seichel, even whether things of the Seichel understands that it's beyond Seichel, or things that are Lachatchil and never even entered into Seichel, it remains on the periphery of a Seichel, it's beyond something that he could even comprehend. Nevertheless, it's still something that he can connect to, it's still a Mishpatim. And through toiling and understanding Taylor. When Taylor is a Chsidis Chabad Bifrat, specifically in Chsidis Chabad, if we can understand Chsidis, he's been Zeichet to learn Tirasa from Mashiach, then we will merit to learn Tirasa from Mashiach. But the Limud Bet Zain and the Nathan from the ear, which then we'll be able to see. See explains a whole new sight, represents a whole new level of understanding. It will be able to see. In, we are as a basar, we'll be able to see the gilui of Elokus. That's the ultimate, ultimate level that be that even the inyanim that are beyond our seichel will ultimately into Rosh Hashanah will ultimately come down into our seichel. So, what we what we take away in the kids and nimrits is that you have three levels. You have a muna, then and a muna and kabbalah soil. Then you have connecting to the Abish al Seichel, and then to know that that is not the ultimate, there's a higher level, but once you reach the Abish that was Seichel, you're able to reach the higher levels also, and in a way that it, it impacts you without breaking. That's why you have first Yisrael, then Mishpatim, then the story of Matan Teira, because first you have to have Yisrael, and then you have to have Mishpatim, Seichel, and then you could reach to the Nasa Vinishma that's beyond Seichel as well.